I'm not going to talk about me too much, uh, but I would like to give you a little intro about me. Uh, I've been a trainer for, I'm old, uh, 25 years. So I started when I was 19. I'm 44. I'll be 45 next month. And uh, it's my passion. It's what I do. Uh, some people call me the diet Nazi because when they see me out in public, they want to hide their food. But um, So I I've own uh, Real Results. It's a gym downtown in the Arts District. Uh, it's been open about four years. Prior to that, I was at LVAC for about 18 years. And then Family Fitness, which was, is now 24-Hour Fitness, and then Golds. So I've pretty much covered the gamut when it comes to fitness in Las Vegas. Uh, but what inspired me to come downtown is I really liked everything that was happening at the time. And my business partner that I had met uh, at the time, Brandon Collinsworth, he and I decided that we wanted to bring fitness to downtown. So we started off with a boot camp in the Jackie Gone Plaza, which is across the street from the, the valet uh, at the El, El Cortez. Just in, in, the, in the, you know, like a concrete jungle right there. And uh, it grew fairly fast. So after that, we decided to get our own location. Uh, I actually had gotten kicked out of a, a few gyms in my life. Uh, but the last one I got kicked out of, I, I, it was a real uh, blessing and favor that they did me because I was bored. You know, they played Glenn Lerner commercials all day. <laughs> and they had this, this music set up. It was just the same videos over and over, music videos just kind of drove me crazy, but um, I needed the inability to uh, unleash my creativity all the time. So having my own gym, I have a lot of freedoms. No one tells me what to do. It's kind of nice. Um, so if you ever want to come by for a visit, well, you can try out a free class. You're more than welcome to. It's real results downtown. Uh, but now just to cover the theme a little bit, uh, broken. So. In thinking about that, um, recently uh, I got divorced. I don't know if anybody's been divorced, but divorce really sucks. Uh, and it takes a while to get over, surprisingly. Um, I hadn't been married very long, but uh, it just it wasn't a good fit. And uh, so I decided to end it about seven months ago. But one of the major things that occurred for me after getting divorced was I, I gained a, a newfound sense of independence and uh, started getting back into things that were very meaningful to me, like my health. You know, obviously I'm a, uh, a fitness coach and I own a gym and such, but I had even started to overindulge all the time uh, when I was married and I started getting a spare tire. Now granted, I'm not a big frame guy or anything, but I started getting, gaining weight that I had never really had before. And uh, after the divorce, I just I wanted to reclaim my strengths once again. So I started prepping my food because before that I was eating out all the time. And you know when you eat out constantly, it's easy to make bad choices because you don't always know what you're getting in your food when you eat out. Restaurants, they want you to come back. So often they're going to put salt and sugar in it. And then the portions are big. So I was just indulging constantly. Um, but I started to tighten up my diet. And in doing so, that led me to what I'm about to show you, which is that I went to a plant-based diet. Uh, and I don't want to come across extreme or you know, uh, try and influence you for global reasons or save the animals. I want to try and keep it a little bit more practical because I've been studying nutrition for 25 years, but this is just seems like a natural progression for me uh, what I'm about to show you but so I started working out again like very uh, vigorously really pursuing business more reading more and I started international travel I've never really done a lot of travel so in December I went to Thailand for three weeks which was bomb I love Thailand uh, the street food is unbelievable you, you'd be surprised but everywhere you go it's a farming country so there's street food lining all the sidewalks, and it's the best. I mean, I've had the best mangoes I had in my life. I was eating them every day. Then uh, I went to Costa Rica for a couple weeks in March, and then I just got back from uh, Europe. So my goal is to travel quarterly for at least a few weeks. So I hope I can keep that up. But anyways, to close all that, um, you know, being broken can have a lot of positive things on you. Um, 
effects on you if you take it that way. And it helps to stay productive. That way I'm not wallowing in my sorrow. And, you know, now I'm, uh, I feel like I'm back to myself again. So with that being said, uh, let's, let's jump into this. Um, when I was 21 years old, come on in. Come on in. Oh, okay. When I was 21, <laughs> let's just take a break and eat real quick. <laughs> When I was 21 years old, I read a book called Diet for a New America, and uh, it, was, it was written by a guy named John Robbins. John Robbins, his father owned Baskin Robbins, and his father wanted to pass down the business to him, and it didn't agree with his philosophies about life, and um, he started doing quite a bit of research, and he discovered a lot of things about a plant-based diet, or back then it was vegan for me. I went pure vegan for five years after I read this book. But it was such a profound book that, uh, you know, back then I was kind of naive and, and very liberal, and I decided just, okay, I'm gonna become vegan. So I just started not eating meat and fish and eggs, and I really had no clue what I was doing. And uh, consequently, over the course of five years, I lost a ton of weight. And granted, remember, I'm not a big frame guy, but I went from probably 150 to 119, which is not good, I was sickly looking. Uh, my shoulders started hurting, like my joints. Uh, I lost all my color. My strength went down to nothing. I had no clue what I was doing. So finally, I went to this physician, and he ran my blood work, and it showed that I was incredibly deficient in a lot of things, but particularly protein. So I started eating meat again, and as a result, my weight went back up. You know, everything normalized, my strength. But in the back of my mind, I've always had a desire to explore that again. So recently, a number of clients uh, within the last few months, it seemed at the same time had been expressing uh, that they wanted help with, um, with diet, but they're vegetarian. So in Real Results, we have this program. It's called the Real 90, and it's a 12-week program largely geared towards making a life transformation uh, through lifestyle change, particularly when it comes to your eating habits. So I went to the drawing board and I started doing research again. And I, found, I started looking up food items, like how many grams of protein are in a cup of black beans? Or how many grams of protein are in you know, one egg white? And then I, I started looking at my own eating habits and I realized that I can, I can fulfill my protein needs quite easily by eating plants almost exclusively. And plant, plant foods, let's say that's fruits, vegetables, uh, beans, and grains predominantly. And what I concluded was, uh, after my research, that in general, a person needs 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. An athlete needs a minimum of one gram of, uh, of protein per pound of body weight. So at the time, I weighed 155 pounds when I started this uh, with the spare tire. So I calculated my whole eating plan, and I was able to get my protein needs met all the time. But one, really, a, f a few nice things happened that I hadn't anticipated. Uh, my food bill got cut in a fourth. I mean, that's a lot. Uh, the amount of time that I was spending cooking and prepping was down to 10 minutes a day, which is nothing. Uh, previously, I advocated you know, prepping your food for a week in advance on a weekend, but man, on the weekend, that's, who wants to do that and cook for th two, three hours? It's boring. And, um, and, I, and I shed all that body fat again. So I'm leaner, I've got more energy, I'm saving a ton of money, and my, I'm saving a lot of time. So you know, if we're talking about shifting towards a plant-based diet, those things inspire and motivate me, rather than you know, us focusing on you know, oh, don't eat animals. Although I have a philosophy about that now as well. Um, so I'd like to kind of show you what I've created here. And uh, if anybody is interested, uh, I think we have a sign-in sheet, or uh, if we do, I'll send this to you. And you can do it yourself. But I want to throw it out there that you know, I'm still learning a lot about plant-based living. Uh, but I feel like I've got a decent handle on it. So let's jump into that. It's uh, called La Boqueria, I, I believe it's called. Has anybody been there in Barcelona? 
It's ridiculous, isn't it? I could spend hours in there. I, I'm so nerdy about food that I was taking video and pictures of food. I mean, come on. Anyways, it, I, I bought some blackberries for a dollar, right? And it was the best blackberries I've ever had in my life. I was, oh my God, I, just, I bought them every day I was there. Here you buy some blackberries or blueberries and they've got white fuzz on them after two, three days. Anyways, it's really annoying. So um, there's, there's my meal prep. Now, you might think I'm a little extreme and I'm okay with that. But this is basically what my meal prep looks like now on a weekend. So um, that's my steel cut oatmeal, chia seeds, and flax. I make that for a whole week. Imagine I wake up in the morning. I go downstairs, turn on two burners. One is for a, 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 the skillet for the eggs, because I'm still eating eggs. And the other is for the steel cut oatmeal. So I pour water in the pot and pour my little concoction in there. That's it. Then it takes five minutes to cook. I, and I don't even have to watch it. I can just do something else, like make my smoothie, for example. This is uh, the protein powder concoction that I'm putting into my smoothie. So I just dump it in, make the smoothie. It takes one minute. And then I've got all these laid out in my fridge. And then this is what I'm you know, mixing my eggs in. So I, while the burner is heating up, I mix my eggs. I pour the eggs in there. I scramble it. It's done in one minute. So my whole prep time, really, for the entire day's worth of food now is less than 10 minutes. And the smoothie is a minute. So, you know, some people, oh, I just don't have time. It really doesn't take any time if you prepare just a little bit in advance. Uh, and this is pretty much all you'll need. So get yourself a nice blender where you're making your smoothies. I recommend the Ninja. Vitamix and Blendtec are more expensive. The Ninja works just fine. It's 100 bucks. A crock pot, you can pick that up for $12, $15. So that's for the eggs. So I, I mean my uh, beans or lentils. So I'll rinse my beans at night. Black beans, you can get them super cheap. Rinse them off, stick them in the crock pot, leave them in there all day, come back and at, at night, they're done. Like It requires no effort to eat healthy. Um, so there's my nonstick uh, pot that I use for my quinoa, my steel cut oatmeal, and then for the eggs, then uh, a cutting board. After you chop your stuff, you can just pour it right in. I'm using this stuff repetitively. It's pretty much all I use. Matter of fact, when I go shopping, the only things I'm buying are the things that I'm consuming. So at the end of the week, my fridge is empty, and I need to go shopping again. I'm not keeping a lot of extra stuff in there because I, I don't need it. I want to be using the food that I'm consuming. Uh, these are some things that you would, uh, would need to pick up. So um, this is the best peanut butter I've, I've ever found. It's the Santa Cruz version. It's organic. You can get it at Sprouts. Uh, Smith's might even have it. Whole Foods should have it. It's uh, crunchy and dark roasted. But it's the best tasting peanut butter i found. You just got to mix it. So here's a little workout just mixing that. This dressing, Makoto dressing, has anybody ever seen that before? Maybe because I, you found about it from me, but. Um, <laughs> well, let's get it, like, how many real results people are here? Let's represent it real quick. We got a few. All right, anyways. Um, thanks for coming. So, you know when you, when you go to the grocery store and you're walking down the aisles, they've got the salad dressing aisle, and there's probably 50, 60 different varieties. So I was at Smith's, and you know where the produce is and there's a cooler there and I walk by and I see this Makoto dressing with this interesting looking label and I say, oh that looks interesting so I walk over to it why think about it why is this dressing in a cooler in the produce section and not with all the other dressings because it's fresh and the ingredients are fresh so there's no preservatives it's got far less salt and, and sugar in it and I put this stuff on everything and it tastes so good so yeah, right. Smith's or Albertson's in the, in the cooler section. Maybe they do have it at Wal, uh, you know, Whole Foods or Sprouts, but I haven't seen it there, or I haven't looked. Uh, maca powder is an ink and superfood. What is a superfood? It just means ultra-packed with nutrients. So I put that in my smoothie. I love the taste of that. Uh, hemp fiber, or hemp protein. I had never even thought to try hemp before. You know, I've seen like baskets and clothes made out of hemp, but to consume it never really occurred to me until I started doing some extra research. It's loaded with quality nutrients and protein. 
and it's inexpensive. You can get that at Sprouts Whole Foods. The Sun Warrior, that's vegan protein. I'm an advocate of vegan protein as opposed to whey, for example, or soy. Um, those don't uh, digest as easily or they don't agree with me as much. But uh, that, I like the natural because it doesn't have stevia. Uh, Sun Warrior also sells a chocolate or vanilla. But um, that I, I'm trying to keep all the sweeteners out of my diet. Stevia is not going to hurt you, but that's just a personal preference. You can get that at just about any health food store. And then grapeseed oil. So these are staples of my diet that I'm using regularly. Grapeseed oil burns better than extra virgin olive oil when you're using it for cooking. Uh, there's also coconut oil, which is great. So those are the items that I'm recommending. And by the way, if, if I send you this program, it'll include these pictures, so you'll know what to get. Um, how easy is this? You, like I just said, all you need is one of those. You soak your beans overnight. You rinse them. You stick them in there all day long. You could put basil, um, bay leaves, onions, whatever you want within your beans to give them uh, flavor. But black beans have a lot of flavor. And they're loaded with protein and fiber. Uh, you'll need bulk items. So what I'll do is I'll go to like Sprouts, for example, and I'll load up on bulk items for three months. That way I don't have to go back there regularly if I don't feel like it. Um, like Smith's, for example, has a great produce section with a lot of organic stuff. So I might shop at Smith's, but then, you know, once a month or what have you, I'm shopping at Sprouts. So black beans, pinto beans, these things are so inexpensive. And you can load up on them, and they can become a staple of your diet. Uh, quinoa, tricolored quinoa, uh, and those are actually complete proteins. So if you're looking to, how can I get more protein in my diet, you can eat quinoa regularly, and that will fulfill your protein needs. Steel-cut oatmeal. Many people are accustomed to eating the instant oatmeal. That's the equivalent of you eating a Three Musketeers bar. It's got that much sugar in it. I used to eat two, of those, two three of those packets every morning when I was growing up, the maple and brown sugar and, <laughs> and the strawberries and cream. Um, but it also has a better texture, uh, so better texture, better taste, and more fiber. And again, these are very inexpensive, but they're, they're incredibly healthy foods. Uh, lentils, much like beans, you'd soak them. Sesame seeds, who would think about sesame seeds? I put that on everything. They're loaded with essential, good essential fats, and good fats help you lose fat, actually. So you need those. Um, and um, they've got protein in them as well. And then ground flaxseed uh, is an essential fat. Again, you need that in your diet. Ground flaxseed has a nutty taste, and I add it to a lot of things, in particular my smoothies. You'll need one of those, as I mentioned, a ninja or something like that. I like this one because it has those quick blend ones. You can pick one of these up at Bed Bath & Beyond, Target, Walmart, 80 bucks. And I've had mine for three and a half, four years, and I'm using it every day, and it, doesn't, uh, it, it holds up well. Uh, this is typically what a shopping cart for me what might look like on a weekend. There's no meat in there at all. You know how much money I'm saving by not eating meat? Uh, now, many of you might think, God, how could I even give up meat? I, it's, it's like hard to even imagine. Trust me, I, I, after I went back to meat, I never thought I could go without it again. But I don't really miss it anymore. I did a transition at first um, when I went plant-based. I, I was eating out on the weekends. I'd still eat meat on the weekends, like Friday and Saturday night, as a treat. Have, has, have any of you ever heard of what's called a blue zone? A blue zone is um, a place in the world, there's only five of them, that, that has the largest amount of people that live to 100. Well, that's pretty interesting. What are these people doing if they're living to 100? Like Okinawa in Japan. We've probably heard that before. That, uh, Loma Linda, California. It's a Seventh-day Adventist community. Uh, then there's uh, one in Costa Rica, one in Greece, and one in Italy, I believe. So there's only five blue zones where people are living to 100. And one of the things that they do is, and it, th this is common throughout blue zones, is they eat three to four ounces of meat, but only maybe four to five times a month. So they're not eating much meat at all. I want you to consider something. Most, I'd say 99% of people that come to my gym and seek out my advice, what are, they ask, what are they looking for? What do most people want by now? Yeah, to lose weight. That's 99% of people. So if that's one of your major objectives is to lose body fat, I'm going to tell you how to do it right now very easily. 
consider that meat and fish uh, have uh, more calories, cholesterol, and they're, they take longer to digest than anything you can consume. So keep that in the back of your head real quick. Then also know that the one function of your body that burns more calories than anything else is digestion. Okay? If you went plant-based predominantly, understand that these foods are uh, not contain a lot of calories, no cholesterol, loaded with fiber and water and nutrients. These foods digest very quickly. So if you went plant-based, you'd get hungry more often, which means that you're going to need to eat more often, which means that you're burning calories more often because digestion burns more calories than anything. My metabolism has become like a hot furnace. I'm eating throughout the day now, it, not full meals, I'm just grazing all day long. And you've all heard that before, if you eat more small meals throughout the day, you're going to lose. That's why, because di you're, you're digesting constantly. So I'm, I'm eating more food than I was before, but because it's so clean, I'm ripped right now because of my, my diet. So anyways, that's what my shopping cart looks like. Um, and this, this is what, $50? for a week worth of food. Because remember the bulk items, that's very inexpensive stuff and I buy that you know, every few months. The almond milk is the priciest, but I've heard that you can make it, so I haven't done that yet. Um, <laughs> it's not as good? Okay. My next big thing that I'm going to explore is I want to learn how to grow food. That's going to be my next deal. You'll need one of these, an insulated lunch bag to take your food with you. Uh, you pick one up at CVS for $20. But here's what, I, uh, what I'll send you if you want it. Uh, this is all the research that I did. This is my diet in general. Now there's variation in here. So let's take a look. Forget about the fats, carbs, calories, fiber, and sugar for the time being. Just look at uh, the items, the amounts, and the protein. Now you might think, God, this is a ton of work. How am I going to do all this? Really, the only work that's required is that very first day where you're measuring out your food. After that, you're eyeing it all the time. So none of this takes any time to prepare. Again, um, so I make my smoothie when I get up in the morning. So I, I load all that stuff in the blender, but remember I turned my burners on so I, can, I get my, my pots heated up. So while I'm uh, loading the blender, and then I, 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 hit, I let that blend for about a minute, that's when I prep my other stuff. So it's like I'm doing multiple things at once. And they're all done basically at the same time. So in that smoothie in the morning, as I've mentioned, I put the almond milk, the protein powder, then I've got that little concoction. Remember that, that Tupperware container that has the chia, the cacao, the ground flax, and the maca. Then look how much vegetables I'm putting in that smoothie. Now, ideally you should be consuming at least five servings of vegetables a day. But see, I don't like them very much. <laughs> so by putting them in the blender, now it's like I get to get all my vegetables, a lot of them, and the, the taste gets masked. So what's masking it? The, the banana, the cacao powder, and the maca. These things mask the taste of those nasty vegetables, okay? But you need them. You need that fiber and the water to help you lose body fat. So um, look, I'm doing a cup of broccoli, collard green, spinach, and cabbage, all of that, in that first meal. Now, you might think, God, that probably tastes disgusting, that smoothie. But it's actually not bad. It really isn't. Um, but notice, there's protein in just about everything. It's not that difficult to get your protein needs met if you just do a little homework like I've done. But I've done the work for you. So you'll see uh, as I scroll through this that there's going to be items that you can mix and match. But look how many grams of protein are in the vegan protein powder. That meal has 37 grams of protein. Then meal two. So another thing that I'm doing is uh, I work out at 8 in the morning. All right? I like a routine. I highly recommend you have a routine. So I work out at the same time every, like Monday through Friday. I get up at 6. Even though I'm working out at 8, I have that smoothie right when I get up. Why? Because I want that food to digest. It gives me energy for my workout. I don't want to work out on a full stomach. So I'm allowing for digestion time. After the workout, shortly after that, I'm hungry again. I'm ready to eat. So uh, I have the steel cut oatmeal with the chia and the flax, and then there's my eggs with all the items that I had mentioned previously. I chop up a chive, put uh, sesame seeds, Italian seasoning, ground pepper, mix that all up, 
scramble it's done in a minute and look how many grams of protein are in one egg eggs got quite a bit of protein in it you could do just whites if you wanted to I'm still doing the yellows okay, for taste but there's uh, was that in four eggs there's quite a bit of protein then later this is my favorite snack I can't imagine that I would ever get sick of it is apple and peanut butter maybe some of some of you do that now look how many grams of peanut butter are in one tablespoon so there's quite a bit of protein in peanut butter surprising almond butter is no different uh, then meal four I'm just doing like a bed of spinach avocado I could even even avocado by itself to me it's flavorful and it's a great snack but then I put that Makoto ginger dressing on it um, there's not too many calories in the dressing Actually, there is a little bit, but it's good essential fats and such. Then, this, the, I have um, in a document that I've created that I would send you, it explains everything that I'm telling you today. So, because I know I've given you a lot of information, but it's all in this document. But at night, so I have some, um, uh, oh gosh, no compromise rules. What are the no compromise rules? Eat light at night you'll wake up hungry and your stomach will be flatter. Eat light at night. Because imagine you've been eating, right? And then all this food's in your stomach throughout the course of the day. And let's say you have a big meal at night, which is when most people eat the largest meals at night. That's the opposite. Your biggest meal should be in the morning when you get up because you need that food for energy throughout the course of the day. So if you eat light at night, you'll wake up and you'll be leaner because your stomach's not having to work so hard on digesting that last meal, it's digesting all the food you ate throughout the course of a day. So that's one of the no compromise rules. So you don't have to do a smoothie at night, you could do something else. This, you, remember, this is plug and play, as long as you're getting your needs met. So at night I do another smoothie, but I'm doing the uh, hemp powder, and instead of a fruit, I'm doing like a carrot. So that's my evening m meal right here. And uh, sometimes at night, I'm not even that hungry. You don't have to eat just because it's routine. Listen to your body. One of the best things that's occurred for me in the last three months since I've been doing this, I'm super in tune with my body's needs. When you eat clean, you're going to notice it. But when you're eating heavy, it's harder to under, uh, understand what your body's needs are. So uh, if you notice down at the bottom, these are my daily totals. Now that this particular spreadsheet doesn't include um, the quinoa and black beans that I've been consuming. So the protein counts lower. So for me, when I add those in, I'm now at my uh, one gram per pound of body weight when it comes to the protein. So let's say um, this guy right here has got a bigger frame than me, or you two. Maybe you guys out may weigh me by 25, 30 pounds. All right, I weigh 140. You look what, weigh 170? Okay, so he, that's because he's, he's buff, all right? So he needs more protein than I do, so what would he do? All he'd do is just make larger servings of the proteins. Or if someone had a smaller frame than me, then they would do less protein. So you can very easily manipulate this to fulfill your needs. It's not difficult. It really isn't. Once you get in the groove and you start seeing your body fat come off quickly, like, okay, I can do this. So I tell you what, I would like to challenge you guys for 30 days. Just try it for 30 days and see how you feel. You can't go without meat for 30 days. Is it going to kill you? Try it. You might like it. You'll save a lot of money and time, and you're, you're going to shed excess body fat that you just don't need. Anyhow, um, maybe I'll just throw out a little bit of environmental stuff at you. Just think about it. Uh, when you're going to Costco or Albertsons and they say this big 12 pack of meat and you can get it for $10, just think, how good of quality is that meat really? If you're gonna buy meat or fish, get it at Whole Foods. Um, there's a video you can watch on YouTube called Farm to Fridge. It's about 12 minutes long. I'd recommend it. So when you scroll down, now look, I'm eating a ton of calories. Look at my calories. That's a lot. But I'm leaner than I was before. So everybody's thinking when it comes to dieting, oh, you've got to cut your calories. That's old school. Forget about that. 
Eat clean and you can eat more and you'll burn it off because your digestive process, people don't pay attention to digestion. When you activate your metabolism, then it becomes on fire. That's exciting to me. Uh, next, so there's all these additional item categories and I'm sending you this in an Excel spreadsheet. So if you, if you didn't like collard greens and you'd rather have cauliflower, just cut it and paste it and do a little math. It's not that big of a deal. So I've got additional items for vegetables, nuts and seeds, uh, beans and legumes, whoops, um, grains, fruits, fats, root vegetables, and then additional I miscellaneous items. He just came for the food, this guy. <laughs> yeah. You'll still get the presentation. I'll send it to you. Okay. Um, so I started eating blue-green algae. Um, did you guys know that's like the most nutrient-dense food on the earth? Blue-green algae. It might not taste that great, but uh, <laughs> um, you can get that at Whole Foods or Sprouts. It's not, it's, it's not cheap either, but you know, it's worth spending a couple extra bucks to get the healthiest food on earth. And uh, you also get a shopping list. So I keep it on my phone, and now I know exactly what I'm getting. So I'm very strategic when I'm going to the, the grocery store. Um, I think that's it.